Good morning. Thanks so much for joining us on Leon County today with Sheriff Walt McNeil. I'm Angela Green in for Shonda Knight. Sheriff, thank you for allowing me to be here today. Well, Angela, we're <laughs> delighted you're here. Uh, unfortunately, Shonda couldn't make it, but she's got a great stand in. Thank you. I think so, too. Now, I'm really excited about today's show because I like movies that talk about um, crime. Mission Impossible is one of my favorite movies, but in that they talk about technology and it sort of glamorizes technology when you think about um, solving crime, but we're kind of at the forefront of that right now. Yeah, we've uh, we've come a long way in terms of trying to not only in, in the Leon County Sheriff's Office, but law enforcement in general has come a long way in terms of trying to leverage technology to fight crime. And we in, in Tallahassee Leon County have embarked upon this relationship with our partners and we built what we call a real-time crime center. And, and, and it, it is so uh, from my perspective, there, there are so many layers to what we do. It is. Uh, we talk about uh, license plate readers. We don't like to talk about that a lot because that gives away some of our secrets. Uh, but the technology allows us to get into places and spaces that we hadn't been able to get into previously. Mm -hmm. And allows us to look at things just by the name of what we call the real-time crime center. It allows us to see things in real time and then make some evaluations about what those things are we're seeing and what's taking place and then do research on the fly, you might say. We have analysts who are analyzing the stuff they're looking at on the camera and then transferring the information after they do the research on it out to the people in the field. It's an absolute game changer. Now you said secrets, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put you on the spot. It's not really a secret what we're doing because people are, I mean, agencies are doing this all across the world right now. They are, but I don't like to give our secrets away when mm -hmm. I talk about secrets, not to our citizens out there, but the yeah. bad guys. We don't want them, want them to know exactly how we're going about catching them doing the things they do out there. And the license plate readers uh, are, are one of those tools that we utilize a great deal. So we started our own real-time crime center you the idea came about in 2017 but we had one in-house can you kind of we talk about license plate readers but what exactly does real-time crime center mean well uh, again just as it says what we have we have a number of locations in town a number of businesses in town alum, a number of city uh, places in town where the city has cameras all the cameras that the city utilized on on the roadways for at stop signs and at red lights and that kind of thing. We now have that those feeds, that, that feed of the video camera into our real time crime center. So we're watching and seeing what's going on in real time. And we can make adjustments to what we're seeing and react to what we're seeing in real time. And that's what, what it's all about, making sure we get the information to the deputy in the field or to the officer in the field and get him or her to that scene. I'm looking forward to hearing so much about this right now. Well, coming up, we'll do a deep dive into our new Capital Regional Real-Time Real Crime Center and kind of give you an idea of what happens, when it happens, and how. We'll listen to the executive director give us more information about all of that and so much more. Stay with us. Good morning. I'm Deputy Garrett with Leon County Sheriff's Office K-9 Unit, and this is your Safety Tip Tuesday. Your baby needs to ride in a rear-facing car seat as long as possible. When your child has outgrown that seat, you are ready for a forward-facing car seat. You'll need to decide on using either the seat belt or lower anchors to secure your car seat. Both are safe, but don't use them both at the same time. A properly fitted harness gives the best possible protection for your child. Look on the car seat label to make sure your child is still within the weight, height, and age limits for that seat. Avoid switching to seat belts too soon. Most kids can safely use an adult seat belt sometime between ages 8 and 12. Keep your child in the back seat at least through age 12. And that's your safety tip. Have a good day. Start your new career as a corrections officer at one of the state's most innovative agencies, the Leon County Sheriff's Office. When I left the academy, my training never stopped. Work with state-of-the-art technology. You can make a lot of money at a very young age. Starting pay is $50,000 a year with amazing benefits. Firearms, taser driving training. A better work-life balance with more time off. They're going to sponsor you through the academy and pay you while you're there. Join the family. Apply today at leoncountyso.com. Welcome back. Executive Director Leslie Rayburn joins us now. Leslie, you're in a new role, but you're no stranger to the Leon County Sheriff's Office. Tell us about your career in the Leon County Sheriff's Office and what you're doing right now. Well, I started the Sheriff's Office back in 2004, so I've been there almost 20 years. Uh, when I was first hired as the agency's very first intel analyst, um, I was assigned to criminal investigations. And from there, uh, I won't lie, the first couple of months, I regretted that decision every day. <laughs> um, because 
there was never an analyst there. So understanding the role of an analyst and how important and critical they can be to investigations, it was a learning curve for everyone. Um, so our staff, so it took a while for me to really get involved in some of the cases. Um, I had some really good guys in narcotics that let me help them. So I really cut my teeth on narcotics cases and violent crime cases. Yeah. Um, from there, I was able to finally convince the powers that be that we needed more of me. Um, <laughs> and then fast forward to several years, we were able to start adding more intel analyst positions. And then um, about eight years ago, we started building out our crime analysis function within the agency. And then back in 17, we started down the road of Real-Time Crime Center. Well, talk about that for a minute. Talk, what, what were the factors that led us to the creation of the Real-Time Crime Center? The Real-Time Crime Center is really a very effective way for us to use technology, along with our analysts and their skills, to be more efficient and effective in helping our detectives and our police officers and just solving crime in general. Um, but also utilizing the technology that we, that we have available to us every day more efficiently. Um, you know, the, the old motto of work smarter, not harder. Yeah. Um, and that's really the goal is to, to solve crime and be very efficient at it. Leslie, uh, obviously you're doing a great job, but talk about how, when Tamo was created to now, how has that mission changed? Wow, it's changed a lot. Um, when we started, it was a beta test. We wanted to, to show that this proof of concept would work and it would actually benefit our community. Um, but it also benefit the law enforcement officers in the field, getting them information. And you fast forward from where we started with two analysts in a room working eight and 10 hour shifts. Now we have more than a dozen analysts in a room. We're 24 hours. We have a very innovative center. Um, we've just, we've grown leaps and bounds and we're continuing to grow even today. Let's talk about that some more. The partnership with law enforcement agencies, how has that worked and what, how has it enhanced the uh, real-time crime center? We have been very, I mean, it's been a very beneficial process for us, bringing on the partners with TPD, FDLE, but also FSUPD has been yeah. critical. Um, even our partners with the School of Criminology, we're different. Um, you know, we're looking at what we do. We're able to, you know, analyze our crimes faster. We're getting information out. You know, we just have more hands on deck at this point. So now instead of, you know, being able to work on one call for service, there's some days we're running five and six calls at a time offering support. You know, I, I was really impressed with uh, FSU and Dr. Blumberg coming on board. A lot of people don't understand the, the component we have with FSU and research. Explain how that research component uh, works with us and how important it is. So real-time crime centers, even though there's several around the country, they're still very new. So historically, if you look at law enforcement, you have standards. You have, you know, if we want to outfit a patrol car, we know what that looks like. If you want to outfit a deputy, you know what equipment they need. But there's really not a standard for creating those real-time crime centers. So our goal with them is to not only look at our internal processes, ways we can be effective or more efficient, but also have a neutral party review what we do. And secondly, secondarily, um, really create that standard for what real-time crime centers should be nationwide. And uh, again, the, uh, the strategies related to research, how do those inter interwoven? How is that interwoven? So the, our research partners, they're, they're assigned to us, they're housed with us, and they look at everything we do from the technologies that we utilize to our processes internally, and they're evaluating that, the good, the bad, everything we need to improve on, things we could do better, and we're looking at new technology. They do the research for us, and they come back and tell us, you know, what are the industry standards? You know, how much money should we spend? But also, they're looking at our crime data and telling us where we are best fit to deploy that asset or that resource. Okay. Hold that thought. Up next, we'll take you inside the Capital Regional Real-Time Crime Center to explain some of the technology used to keep you safe. Stay with us. At the Florida Sheriff's Association, we are able to serve our sheriffs and Floridians thanks to our member support. The FSA Member Perks Program was created to give back to our members for all that they do. Members enjoy savings on restaurants, vacations, golf courses, car rentals, health care, movie tickets, theme parks, online shopping, and more. With over 300,000 offers, you'll always find ways to save. To learn more or to join the Florida Sheriff's Association, visit fsamemberperks.org. We're back with Executive Director Leslie Rayburn of the Capital Regional Real-Time Crime Center. Leslie, let's talk about some of the expansions that have made in a real-time crime center and exactly how we're we keeping our citizens safe. Well, some of the expansions with the new center is we were able to bring all of our partner agency and their information on board into one center. 
Um, so instead of having to call agencies and get information, all the analysts have all that information at their fingertips. They're able to sit there and data mine and, and get that information out much quicker. Um, in addition to, we just have more data feeds coming into the center with, you mentioned license plate readers. We're able to share all of our, our technologies across one platform now. Um, same thing with any of the cameras. We have all of this information and all of these feeds coming into one area where we're not having to, to pick up the phone and call and ask someone to check on something for us. We're actually able to do that in real time. Yeah, what's that like? The, uh, we've got the technology out there, the, the license plate readers, in, in terms of outcomes. How is that helping us fight crime and getting cr criminals off the streets? We're doing it quicker. Um, you know, using that technology, but using our resources with our deputies, we can get them information faster. And, you know, stolen vehicles, we, we mentioned that earlier. Stolen vehicles, we're recovering much quicker because of the technologies, but also being able to look at that historical data and feed that to either the detectives or the investigators or whoever's asking for it and kind of put those puzzle pieces together before it goes into a report and it goes into a, a detective's file to, to be worked down the road. Yeah, now some our, our citizens out there are probably asking the question, what's the difference between a dispatch center and a real-time crime center? We fill in the gap. So dispatch, their primary function is to take the information from the caller, whatever the complaint is, process that information into the system and get a deputy or other first responder on scene. From there, we have a multitude of databases where now we're sitting at those computers, we're getting the information either on the location, the persons, so that we can start feeding that information out quicker. Um, so whereas where dispatch stops the process, we pick it up before the deputy or, or investigator or law enforcement officer ever gets on scene. So it's really that gap that a lot of people aren't familiar with that we're able to fill. You know, one of the biggest concerns I had when we first started this out was how do we maximize our effectiveness? In other words, how do we leverage the technology on a 24-hour basis to make sure there are no gaps out there in our community. And uh, so how does that 24-hour coverage occur and how many uh, people you got working 24 hours a day, seven days a week? Seven days a week. Um, so the way our, our schedules are, our analysts rotate with their patrol shift. So they are typically working the same rotation as a deputy or police officer. So with that, we're able to take that 24 hours and fill those spaces in from really 5 a.m. all the way to 4.30 a.m. the following day. Um, and with that, you know, the, the analysts have built those relationships with their, their patrol shifts. Um, and that actually helps the, the increased usage of the center because now you've got these relationships, internal and external, with our partners and our internal, you know, stakeholders. But the main thing is we don't stop. So if a call comes in, um, and it's at the end of one shift that other analysts that's coming on can pick it up and run with it. So we try not to have those gaps and even on, you know, a call for service. Yeah, Leslie, you've done, a, you've done a great job with this. And I can recall at the very outset, we would go around to our community trying to find community partners that would partner with us and give, their, give us their video feeds. Uh, talk about that for a minute. How important is it to have our community engaged with the Real-Time Crime Center, sharing uh, video feeds and that kind of stuff into the real-time crime center, utilizing that te technology. How important is that to us and to the community? It's very critical. Um, having that information in real time, you know, we can, there's information that maybe the caller is not able to share because they can't see it, or um, the law enforcement are approaching a situation and there's things that they're unaware of. We can feed that in instantly. So there's community, public and private partnerships, that just enhances what we do. It makes us more efficient and more effective in our jobs, but also it gives us more information. Um, to be able to, to relay back to those responding. In about 30 seconds, what's next for the Real-Time Crime Center? Lots of growth. Lots of growth. We are going to, more people, more technology, um, and solving more cases. Thank you, Leslie. A tremendous job. I can't say enough about you and your staff and the progress we've made. I think this partnership with FSU, TPD, and our other partners, I hope to grow it beyond our, our community regionally. But thank you, it all started with you. Thank you very much. Next up, in our deputy on duty, We'll take an inside look at the Leon County Detention Facility to hear from the chief who oversees the day-to-day -day operations, to hear what motivates him after more than two decades on the job. On this episode of Leon County Today's Deputy on Duty, we're on the job with Chief Norman Mack. He's currently in charge of operations at the Leon County Detention Facility. I've been here 26 years and I don't regret it. 
Chief Mack began his career at the Jefferson County Sheriff's Office as a correctional officer back in 1995. Two years later, the rest was history when he got hired in the same position with LCSO. I came over because I was doing transports for Jefferson County. And I actually had an interaction with some of the um, guys in Booking. And after talking with them, and I decided to come over to Leon County. Over the years, Chief Mack took advantage of learning opportunities. In 2005, he went back to the academy and received his law enforcement standards. That's commonly referred to as dual certification. He also received Florida gang investigator certifications. Through hard work, dedication, and commitment, Mack is now approaching his 26th year with LCSO. He climbed the ranks with promotions before achieving his current leadership role. From my days as an officer, sergeant, to chief. It really hadn't changed much. You know, you're still caring about people. Chief Mack is now responsible for overseeing at least 130 employees and every day is different. The detention facility is much like a small city and it takes many team members to smoothly facilitate these daily operations. It's equipped with everything needed to handle the care, control and custody of hundreds of individuals who are detained. In the run of a day, they serve over 3,000 meals. Everyone has to go to medical, and everyone has to have checkups, uh, two-week checkups, uh, year checkups. Uh, we send out sick calls. And running such a facility is a huge challenge, but with nearly three decades of experience under his belt and having worked in almost every unit at the detention facility, Chief Mack has learned a lot from each person he's worked with. You always remember... Uh, how someone makes you feel. And as a supervisor, you know, you had something that actually will pour into you and give you what you need to make that next step. So I've been fortunate. As far as his secret to longevity in his career? When I spoke about starting into this career, you know, it was the same time that I um, got into the church and got married at the same time. So it was the thing of you know, it's more divine, you know, me getting into this profession when I did because, uh, you know, as, you know, you help people because you get situations where people need help. And as, you know, it's just making sure someone gets the help they need is pretty much the most important thing. And that divine calling has played a major role in his success. He tells us he knows working in corrections has a negative stigma of being dangerous and long hours of shift work. The hours that you work here, it's a camaraderie. You spend almost half your time that you would spend with your family, with the individuals that you work with. But his words of advice, if you are seeking change and looking for a rewarding career to help make a difference in your community, apply for a job as a corrections officer with the Leon County Detention Facility. You know, it's something about building that camaraderie. When you build that camaraderie, you get more, uh, everyone looks out for each other a little bit more. We know how our families are doing. It, it's, it's a relationship there, you know, and not just a job anymore. And when that happens, you know, it, it gets better and the stress and the day-to-day -day hustle becomes a little bit easier. It's more of caring about people, you know, having that humanity, understanding that, uh, uh, that this is someone's family member. You can find details right now on LeonCountySO.com. For Leon County Today, I'm Angela Green. Start your new career as a corrections officer at one of the state's most innovative agencies, the Leon County Sheriff's Office. When I left the academy, my training never stopped. Work with state-of-the-art technology. You can make a lot of money at a very young age. Starting pay is $50,000 a year with amazing benefits. Firearms, taser, driving training. A better work-life balance with more time off. They're going to sponsor you through the academy and pay you while you're there. Join the family. Apply today at leoncountyso.com. Download the Leon County Sheriff's Office mobile app right now. Our mobile app makes it easier than ever to report a crime and get important safety alerts. You can also see who's been booked at the Leon County Detention Facility and follow reported crimes in your neighborhood, all in one convenient location in the palm of your hands. Download LCSO Connect right now. It's free in the Apple App Store and Google Play by searching LCSO Connect.
All right, welcome back, Sheriff. We're closing out the show right now, but you know, when I think of Chief Mack, um, he's such a, a gentle giant, but he has an impact on these people that work in the detention facility and they really look up to him. Well, they absolutely do. And, and he has been there for uh, two decades, as you've indicated, and uh, Mac is just one of a kind. He, he's a kind, kind person, cares about everybody, everything, and uh, uh, is always there when you need him. Uh, I've, I've called on Mac to do a number of things in our detention facility, and uh, he does it with gusto and with feeling, and then he, he does it uh, in a caring way, a kind way. Uh, I, I think we're very lucky to have him working in our detention facility to, to model, uh, to be a role model, not only for our staff, but for the persons we have incarcerated. And uh, so I'm, I'm just delighted that uh, we're recognizing him on the show. Uh, he, again, has done a tremendous job for us. And I hope he's not retiring anytime soon. No, he did not give me any indication that he is ready to retire. So I like that you brought in the fact that he mentors people on the in that role because people think to be a correctional officer, you have to have that hard edge to you, and you really don't. <laughs> well, we are trying to change that image, uh, not only in Lynn County Sheriff's Office, but all across the country with respect to uh, detention facilities. That's why most agencies that are forward thinking are looking at reentry as a huge part of what we're involved in. And that takes uh, a, a bit of kindness going both ways to try to get those persons who are incarcerated to understand that there are people that care. And if they'll take the first two or three steps, we'll take the rest of the steps with them. And, and Mac does that in the job each and every day. And in circling back with the Real Time Crime Center, what strides we're making? <laughs> oh, I'm telling you now, Leslie Raybarn is a superstar. I, I can't Im impress upon you enough. Uh, everything I've ever asked that lady to do, she's done uh, A1, top notch, and the Real Time Crime Center is no exception. Yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to all the um, things that come out of there. I know we sometimes put out statistics on um, how often they catch criminals and the stolen vehicles and stuff. So I'm really looking forward to seeing with this partnership how much further that takes us. It, it's the new thing, and uh, I believe it is going to be cutting edge, and it's going to make a difference in our community in terms of driving down crime. And it's going to be an example of our all-in initiative that it, it takes all of us working together. This is another example of that fact. All right, well, thank you, Sheriff, and thank you for everybody for tuning in and being all-in today. We will see you next week.